So I don't talk about gear that much on this channel, but I've been thinking about this for a while and keeping tabs on what gear I'm using and what is actually making a difference in my quality of photography and videography over the last year or so. So some of these accessories are super cheap, some of them are free, some of them are really, really pricey, and I'll link the ones that I personally am using right now down below the video, as well as some more budget-friendly ones that I've used in the past that I also recommend. One of the reasons that I have some of this expensive stuff is because now that I do YouTube, uh, companies send me stuff, which is a cool perk for YouTube. So I'm very thankful for that, but I will say that the budget-friendly stuff that I've used in the past and still have will also do the job and also improve your photography. So thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. All right, so number one, and this is something that I didn't have for a really long time, but as soon as I got one, it's pretty much been on my camera for every single photo I've ever done and definitely dramatically changes your photography for the better. It gives you control, it gives you better colors and lots of other stuff. You guys already know this, I'm sure, but circular polarizer. So this one's from Polar Pro. It is extremely, extremely expensive and nice, but the one that I had before was from Tiffin, I believe, and also did a great job. So this one's a little bit more heavy duty and looks cool, but other than that, I think it does a pretty similar job. Um, this last trip that I did, I dropped this on an island onto some rocks, and I was really worried that it was about to break, but still fine. So no matter what, if I'm doing photo or video, I've got the circular polarizer on my camera because it just makes that big of a difference. So if you don't have one of these, I think every photographer and videographer absolutely needs to have one in their kit. And here's a few things you can look forward to once you get one. Number one, you can get more colorful plants and grass. So I know that sounds kind of silly, but if you are shooting in bright sunny conditions and there is a harsh reflection on plants or grass or something like that, or like a roof, it'll typically show up as kind of a white highlight on your camera and you can't do anything about it. But put the circular polarizer on, twist it a little bit, and you can cut that reflection down and turn it into a really, really nice saturated color, which is a huge, huge benefit. You can even use it for portraits to tone down glares on people's skins from sunlight or flashes or whatever you're doing. So super handy for a lot of reasons. It's great for water too. So if you have some pretty water and it's got a glare on it, showing up as white, you can make it turn into a color. But sometimes it affects the water for the better, sometimes it affects it for the worse. So I always try a few different options when I'm using it and pick the better one in post. So cut down reflections on plants and grass, cut down reflections and glares on people's skin during portraits, cut down glares on water if you are filming or shooting landscapes. And then also you can get much more colorful bluer skies and more uh, detail in your sunsets, which is really neat. I had this photo the other day that I'll put on the screen, but the difference was crazy in the sunset. It's almost like you are editing it in your camera. When I was looking through the images on my camera, I couldn't remember what I did differently, but it was a circular polarizer. All right, number two is kind of a funny one, but it's a tripod that is travel friendly. So you don't have to have a tripod to get good shots, but if you do have a tripod, you can do more types of shots and you can get sharper images as well. So here's a few reasons that are a little different that I like to use a tripod for that get me images that I wouldn't be able to get otherwise. All right, number one, something that I've really gotten into lately is panoramas. So not every tripod has this, but you can get it set up and then you have a front little dial that allows you to just swivel this axis, so panning, and that is typically used for panoramas. So you can do a photo here, do a photo a little bit turned, a little bit turned, do another photo, do another photo. And even though you can do those handheld, and I do that sometimes, Using a tripod, it's going to get you sharper images. They're going to line up better. It's just usually going to end up a bit better. So panoramas, really great reason to use a tripod. And one thing that I actually have found works really well for them is to zoom in a bit. So either 50 to like 100 millimeters and get that compressed perspective because not only is there less distortion and risk of it turning out weird uh, from lining up too 
too wide of a field of view, but it uh, just gives a really unique look. Second thing, speed control. So with a tripod, you're able to shoot with a slower shutter speed and still have a sharp image. So unless you have in-body image stabilization and lens stabilization too, you're probably not gonna be able to do that slow of a photo and get it sharp. So with a tripod, you're able to do whatever you wanna do. You can do 30 second photos, you can do 10 second photos, you can do one second photos, uh, a lot of cool stuff. So this opens up the opportunity to show motion in your photography, so whether that's with water, fire, showing some stars, showing a you know light trails and stuff from the city, a lot of stuff you can pull off and still get a sharp image that you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't have a tripod. <laughs> All right, next thing, tip for videographers, do some time lapses. It's a lot of fun. I've been doing this as kind of a side quest on any client projects lately or any trips that I've done lately. Um, set up your camera while you're doing something else on a cool angle and just let it roll. It's always really cool to find out how the sky changes, how the lighting changes, how things are moving when you watch that back later. And definitely something you couldn't do without a tripod. And as far as tripods go, my personal favorite is actually the Peak Design Travel Tripod because it actually folds down as small as a water bottle and can fit in the side of any backpack, inside of any luggage, anything. And it weighs basically nothing. So you're not gonna have any reasons to not keep it with you at all times. So second to that is this one that Manfrotto sent me. You know, it's one of the classic ones that folds up like this and still really small, fits in my luggage really easily. Fits in a backpack really easily, strapped on the outside of a backpack really easily. But people are going to see it. People are going to notice that you're a photographer. So you're a little bit at risk of getting robbed or something. <laughs> That's the only downside to this. The upside of this is that it's actually, I think, more sturdy than the Peak Design one. So on the Peak Design one, the legs kind of bend a little bit if you have a heavy setup on it. <laughs> and this one doesn't. So this one's really, really sturdy. It's got a little bit thicker legs and it's been great. I've had it for like a year and use it for pretty much everything and it's been really, really solid. Anyways, on to the next thing. It is using a remote trigger or self timer. So on your camera, you can just go in and set your self timer to either two seconds or 10 seconds, depending on what you're doing. And whether you have your camera on a tripod or if you're holding it handheld, that is going to make sure that you're not, you know, going like that while you're pushing the shutter whenever the shutter goes off. So that'll help you get sharper, clearer images. Really, really helps with those tiny little subtle details that you might not notice unless they're messed up. So another thing that this opens up is the opportunity to do self portraits. So you can set a 10 second self timer or have a little remote trigger or use your phone, Bluetooth with the app to trigger it and do some self portraits and have your own content or just photos for your memories, whatever you want to do. So self timer is going to help you get sharper images, therefore better images. All right, camera strap. So I know this also seems kind of silly, but the reason why I put this on there is because having a good camera strap option, this is the one I use makes it to where you can just always have your camera on you while you're walking around. That means you're gonna miss less shots. You're going to be less tired. You can keep using your hands for other stuff and you're gonna end up getting more shots that are better. So pretty obvious, but this is what I do for walking around on trips. I'll strap this one on like this. I have my tripod plate on the bottom. So then I have these two both on one side. So. It's not really in the way whenever I do a photo. If I wanna take it off, I can just do these things and we're free to go handheld. But especially if you are going around hiking or doing other stuff where you need to keep your hands free in case you fall or something, uh, having this is definitely great. Besides all that, the main thing I would say is have a nice versatile kit that's easy to keep with you at all times so you are able to get more shots. And the more shots you get, the more good shots you're gonna get and the better you're gonna become. So anyways, I hope that was helpful and I hope seeing some of the images as the results 
was also helpful for you. I don't talk about equipment that much because everybody has their own preferences and you can do a lot of great work with a little bit of equipment or a lot of equipment. So at the end of the day, it's all just tools and it can help you get the job done easier or it can help you get some more specific results or less specific results or more unique results. And some gear can just make you have more fun as a photographer trying new stuff. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful and I appreciate you tuning in. And as always, I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.